Hi everyone, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to get some physics done in 3D Studio Max just to show um, a couple of physics examples. Okay, so I'm going to create a kind of a little fake bowling alley. So just create whatever type of scene you want. I'm going to create a plane here. Maybe I'll create, uh, I don't know, what's a bowling alley look like? We're just going to go with, uh, say, a box here. Going to convert this to edible mesh, grab this polygon, extrude in just a little, little teeny bit. And extrude back. Oh, like that. I guess uh, what I'll do is I'll extrude back one more time. Extrude this under. We can't really see much. I'll go to the shaded. There you go. That's better. And I'm just gonna. Now we have a little hole for the pins to go into. Got a little bit of a siding there for this. You don't have to spend too much time on this. It doesn't really matter what the bowling alley actually looks like. I just want you guys to practice um, making. Uh, the actual physics right now, and just creating a little decoration. So you can you can create decoration as well. Don't be afraid to do that. Of course, I encourage creativity. Um, and if you can just do this really fast, just like I'm doing, then uh, definitely go crazy with it. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm almost done. We'll make the sidings go a little bit up. This is the easiest game. And I'm going to mirror this tools mirror. I'm going to offset the Y, set it to copy. And then there we go. I'm going to create some pins, just uh, simple ones. All I'm going to do is create a box. I'm going to push F4 so I'm on edge faces mode. Uh, I'm going to give it, let's say, five height parameters so I can squeeze this part out like that then squeeze this part out a bit and squeeze this part in because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a turbo smooth modifier uh, make sure that your vertexes are off like that go back here I'm going to click this little vial here which will show end results on or off and modify it and you can see I have a nice looking chubby pin which I will stretch out just a little bit like that I'm going to collapse all and flatten the bottom just a little bit like that and now I have my pins I'm going to create a five pin setup to I think that should work. I'm going to squeeze them in a bit, actually. There you go. Line it up down the middle. There we go. I'm going to save my scene. Bowling. And I'm going to create a sphere for the bowling ball. Just like that. Okay, so here's what we want to do. We have our scene, and we're going to animate the bowling ball by using set keys. I'm going to turn the set key. I'm going to click the key. It creates the first keyframe. And I'm going to go to, let's say, frame 45. I'm going to drag it and set key. And you can play the animation by clicking the play button. And then, you know, frame 65 will make sure it's down here, hidden away. And rotated set key. And I'm gonna set I'm gonna make sure to set the keys for the rotation too. Like right now I have a little rotation. And uh so every time you set a key, it will set a key for rotation, scaling, and positioning. Uh right now uh I just made it so that it has a little bit of a rotation at the other frames, even though you really can't see it on the sphere, so I'm not too worried about that. I just want the animation to go through and hit the pins. Um so that's what it's doing right now, which is great. Uh, the little off center, which I want because it'll give it that cool motion. So what we need to do is we're going to 
uh, start applying uh, our uh, physics. To do that, we go, we click on our ball here, and we go to animation. We go to uh, the 3D Studio Max's new physics formula called Mass MassFX, uh, rigid bodies. And you can see that we have three different types of rigid bodies. We have dynamic, kinematic, and static. Now, dyna dynamic means that 3D Studio Max will determine how it works and give it physics like gravity already adjusted and give it weight. Kinematic means that we're, we've animated it, and 3D Studio Max is just going to add like a physics uh, smash to it. And static is just completely static objects that do nothing to the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all my pins, and I'm going to put the uh, animation modifier, mass effects, rigid body, uh, dynamic. And you can see it creates like a little skeleton outline. Now this in a video game is bas basically would be um, what's called the hitbox. And pretty much it just automatically assigns everything a hitbox, which is great. Um, and now if I have this one, uh, select your bowling ball, animation, mass effects, rigid bodies, kinematic, we have our ball here. And see with kinematic, you can't bake the frames because you're telling 3D Studio Max, no, I'll give it the frame, so no baking on that. However, if we click on one of the pins, you can see it says bake, and it shows that we have dynamic written on here. Now you can, uh, it has automatically assigned what it thinks the density, the mass, the friction, everything else uh, should be. We can change that and uh, go to the presets here, and we can change it to cardboard, concrete, limestone, rubber, steel. But I'm kind of happy just with the presets, and I'm just testing things out. So what you're going to do, is you can either uh, click on, yeah, just click on one at a time and go bake. And what's gonna happen is uh, you're going to see the physics start interacting. So we're gonna start with the front pin. We're gonna bake that. What happens is you can see the first pin get knocked over. Now the reason why the pin doesn't interact with anything else is because there's nothing else set to static. It's just using the grid as a basic, start, uh, basic standpoint. So I'm going to uh, unbake, and you can see that the animation is no longer there. I'm going to grab all of these bits here. My buddy is now playing DC Universe, good for him. And um, I'm going to go to animation, mass effects, rigid body, and static rigid body. This pretty much means that there, whatever it has a static body is never going to move. It's just there for interaction purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click bake again. And now we're seeing that small interaction with everything else in the scene. Click through each pin and click bake so that it bakes the keyframes. And now when we play our animation, we may run into some issues. You can see like uh, this pin right here, uh, over here is not interacting very nicely. Um, but it just means we'll have to do some adjustments. And there's obviously a little problem with this pin. It might not be entirely perfect, but um, you can always adjust it. You can unbake it and rebake it just in case something doesn't go right. So I'm going to grab, for instance, this pin here. I'm going to click unbake. And I'm going to try and maybe give it a preset like concrete and bake and see what happens. <laughs> and now that it's on concrete, you can see that it can withstand pretty much any force. Um, and, uh, oh, so now we're seeing an issue here. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, sorry, I did not plan this out uh, entirely appropriately, but here's the mistake that you'll make when you do objects as well, which is good to learn. Uh, right now, when you assign a rigid body type static, what it's creating here is a hitbox, like we said before, right? You can see these white lines of the entire hitbox. Now, when you create a hitbox, it means that anything that hits any area inside of this will... Um, that means you know it bounces off this. Now, because we extruded it and because we created it the way we did, um, you're going to see that it's going to actually bounce off. It does none of the pins go inside like they should, right? You see them bounce forward. Uh, that's because there's an issue with uh, creating hitboxes like this because it will even if something is invisible and oh, sorry, not invisible, something has a hollow shell in it. Uh, you have to create a different type of hitbox for it. Um, so. Uh, what you have to do is you have to change the shape type and we're going to change it to custom. So that means uh, as soon as we rebake these and let's see if we get this going, you'll see now that it actually goes inside. So it's a good suggestion if you want the actual shape of the pins and everything else, 
to be entirely accurate, like 100%, instead of using things like uh, convex, um, you have to choose custom. Now, when you have a kinematic object, oops, sorry, let me uh, just unbake this. Yeah, uh, you'll probably want something like convex because it adds, actually has a really nice shape to it and takes a lot less um, building up. But we can always go to custom, and custom always fits your 3D model. And you'll see if I rebake it right now, you see we're running into a little bit of an issue there. Now, kinematic objects uh, aren't perfect all the time when it comes down to making customs. That's why it's good to give them a shape type like convex. Uh, and when it comes to static objects, custom usually always works for them. But kinematic objects, try and use a different type a, of uh, shape, uh, like convex. But for any type of static objects, you can use custom, and that's absolutely fine. Just remember that if you're going to animate something, you'll want it as a um, kinematic, uh, sorry, kinematic object. Sorry, this is kinematic, the bowling ball. That means you will animate it, and you just want to assign it so that... Uh, um, a hitbox so that when it smashes into something with physics it interacts with it if it's dynamic it means that it will be animated by, animated automatically by 3d studio max and using the density the mass the friction the bounciness uh, settings that are all here and if it's static it usually doesn't require any settings uh, usually the density and the mass is just for um, uh, not really that important but the friction is still important because objects will rub against uh, that part of the scene and then uh, whenever you want to start animating, you just click bake or unbake here and it will uh, adjust your animation appropriately. And you can see that we have a little bit of an animation. And don't forget that um, to rebake all, if you make any changes, remember to rebake everything. And you can see like, like now all those fixes will work. And we have a bowling alley. So if you see it from a different view, click play, boom, like that. Remember, you can bake and unbake if you have any issues. And uh, I mean, that's about it. A little quick tutorial on some uh, basic Mass Effects physics. Remember that to access the Mass Effects menu, you can always go to Animation, Mass Effects, and Rigid Bodies. And uh, don't be afraid to play around a bit. And you can even create ragdolls. Uh, you can go to Cloth and create cloth simulations uh, and play stop, uh, step and reset all simulations. Uh, to make it a little bit easier on yourself, if you have all the pins and you don't want to click bake and unbake, well, you can go to animation, mass effects, simulation, and you can bake all the objects at the same time. Gives it a little processing time. They're all baked for you. And you can even unbake all of them at the same time as well. If you go down to simulation, sorry, unbake all objects. And you see it resets the entire scene for you. Play around, have fun, create a bowling alley with lots of like multiple balls, maybe 30 pins, 20 pins, 10 pins, and just have fun with it. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you again next time.